What is up everybody? Dan Dan the Fireman here. I want to talk to you about seven types of depression. Now, this is a very touchy subject for a lot of you, especially men. Um, and the reason why I want to talk to you guys about it is because I do. I personally have depression and anxiety. I have clinical depression. I was diagnosed with clinical depression. I was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder, or GAD. And I just want to share this with you. And, and in no way, shape, or form am I coming from a position of, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to diagnose you, I'm going to do this. I am not a doctor. If you feel like um, that some of these things might apply to you and you are finding this channel for the first time because of this video, please go see a doctor. I'm going to tell you right now, it is one of the most liberating feelings, feeling super low to be able to have a direction to go to uh, when you see a doctor. It's, it's just a matter of seeing a doctor, just talking to somebody. That's super huge, super important, and I, I recommend it more than anything. Um, but if you are here because you want to know and you, you're a Dan Dan the Fireman subscriber, well, here you go. Here's seven things um, or seven types of depression, uh, including mine. So one of the things that you hear about all the time is clinical depression. Uh, clinical depression, like people say, I have clinical depression. That's actually what the doctor told me I have uh, based on my own symptoms and based on my own things. And uh, the real term is uh, major depressive disorder, MDD. It is uh, one of the more common ones, like I said, and it has a lot of the same symptoms as all the other depressions. Depression in, in itself has a set of symptoms and the reason why there's different types is based on time, based on you know how the severity, to based on um, uh, if it's a chemical imbalance internal, uh, you know, causing it, or if it's an external causing it. So there's different. That's why there's different types. Um, a lot of people just say I have depression. Well, there's a there's a different types, and then there's also different medications that that solves certain types. Uh, but MDD, major depressive disorder, uh, is usually like a lack of interest in activities normally enjoyed. Now that is something huge because I've actually almost wanted to quit YouTube a few times. I've almost wanted to quit my job a few times. I had no interest in my job, no interest in certain home life situations. I just like literally have no interest and it's like I normally enjoy those. And it, it, it's easy to say that, but you know that you enjoy it. You know that you're good at it. You just don't want to get up and do it. And that's that's a very difficult thing and it's and it's not I just don't want to it's like I, I can't I want I don't want to and I can't and, it, and it's a terrible feeling so that's something that uh, I've had to deal with for a long time and I usually got myself out of it with caffeine uh, energy drinks um, just because you know you get that stimulant and it's like I got to do it now because you're you're super hyped up another thing is you change in weight you can either uh, gain weight or lose weight um, a lot of people don't like to eat um, because when they delve into a certain hobby that kind of gets them out of uh, a depressive state, like a lot of people like watching TV or uh, going to sleep or sitting on a computer on the phone, they just forget to eat. So you can lose a lot of weight or you can actually gain a weight, gain a lot of weight by um, by just overeating because that is like your, your go-to. Like for me, it was the, the computer and cell phone. So some people, their go-to is food to help them deal with whatever it is and just you know, just get rid of that feeling. It's really all it is, is to get rid of that feeling. Uh, changes in sleep, I still deal with this. Like, I had a bad night's sleep last night. Um, I don't know why, I, I just maybe I bad bed or something, I don't know. But changes in sleep, like you'll either go to bed way late one night and go to bed early another night, and then wake up multiple times a night. No, no reason why, have no clue. Um, so that's another thing that the doctor wanted me to do was to get a sleep study. Now, I promise I'm going to get to the other types of depression, but I want to get through all the symptoms that usually go with everything else, and then I won't have to do this for every single type. Now, fatigue was a huge thing. Fatigue was very big for me, is that um, while going around the day, just like super tired, just like I just want to sit down or I want to go take a nap. I, I would take naps three, four hours a day, every day. And then, like I said, the energy drinks would help me. And that's the only thing that would help me. Even then, sometimes I'd be drinking energy drink and fall asleep. So it's 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 a very difficult thing. Difficulty concentrating, the feeling of worthlessness and guilt. Um, like when something happened, or when something happens to me, like a, like a constructive criticism, it makes me just feel guilty for doing something wrong. Um, just like the smallest thing. Like I feel, I'd feel low all the time, and then anything good that would happen would bring me to like what a normal person would feel. I would never have that feeling of life is great. I would just get myself out of that funk for a little bit into that position of, you know, 
this is uh, this is normal I guess whatever you know but but I would always feel pretty guilty and then just the not being able to concentrate I just wouldn't be able to I'd be in my own head and it, it would just suck so if you experience a majority of those symptoms for longer than two weeks it'll probably be diagnosed as MDD or clinical depression so that's why I went through the whole symptoms list now a lot of these symptoms like I said will co coincide with all the other types of depression but if these last for longer than two weeks um, you probably will be diagnosed with that now it could be fixed like I said it could be fixed um, with medications or with uh, it can be fixed with therapy then it could just go away depression doesn't have to stick with you the rest of your life uh, for me it might because of the chemical imbalance but um, for other people when it's an external thing uh, more than likely it'll, it'll go away with treatment or be less severe with treatment now the next one is persistent depressive disorder it used to be called dysme dysme dysmia dysmia I'm gonna put that up there <laughs> um, it is when you have those symptoms that I described uh, more days than not when you have them let's say five days out of the week for more than two years it's a persistent 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 now I've had mine for a decade at least so like I said I'm, I, I was diagnosed with MDD but a lot of these different types of depression disorders uh, kind of fits in with what what I have so I'm actually gonna go see a therapist and see if I could diagnose because like I said some medications can work differently for different types um, there's SSRIs and then MAOIs and I don't know exactly what they stand for I heard off the top of my head but they work for different types of depressions uh, a little bit better now number three is the bipolar disorder you hear this kind of a lot thrown around um, it's a mood disorder characterized by periods of abnormally elevated mood known as mania these periods of mania can be mild like hypomania hypo means low hyper means high um, or they can be so extreme that they interfere with a person's life the vast majority of those with a bipolar illness also have episodes of major depression they include a lot of the things uh, like I mentioned um, so like the fatigue the insomnia so the sleep changes uh, lethargy lethargy however you want to say it uh, aches and pains um, hopelessness loss and all that stuff so a lot of it is the same as a, as the normal depressive disorders but um, you can have these bouts of super super low and then kind of high um, and the, or they could be uh, like on the extreme like super super low and super super high or they could be like more mild more like baseline so like you kind of go down a little bit go up a little bit go down a little bit go up a little bit and uh, when you hit those down points they can they can really do affect you so there's that bipolar that you kind of need to kind of check up on that um, if you have something similar to those symptoms and one of the major problems with bipolar disorder is that if you have this illness you have a 15 times greater chance to commit suicide um, just based on you feel great one day and then it just plummets and you just get you don't get used to that cycle um, at least from what I've read and it just hits you so hard that that's where the suicide comes it's that split decision I'm gonna do that um, you can develop psychosis and hallucinations and it, it's, it's bipolar is something that truly does need to be treated and, and sought for by or, or medication or some type of treatment by a doctor so the next one is postpartum depression now you can go from postpartum depression to postpartum psychosis which is actually something a little step further so it's a condition which the mood episode is accompanied by confusion hallucinations or delusions that's a, that's a postpartum psychosis now postpartum depression is postpartum after birth uh, depression now this happens a lot with women but it can also happen with men um, I don't know exactly how because the chemicals and everything involved especially with the hormones and everything that women do experience when it comes to giving birth and after birth and all that stuff but men do get that men do get postpartum depression um, it usually has the same characteristics as MDD like all the, the symptoms I explained at the beginning of this video um, so the lethargy the general mood changes the feeling of helplessness uh, lack of concentration all that stuff um, it can happen right after birth and usually it goes away but you're gonna need to get um, like I said some help so that way it can you can hopefully fix the issue and then when it goes away you can stop taking meds you can stop um, seeking uh, uh, help and then it might go away you know obviously based on what your doctor uh, prescribes and based on what your what your therapist says to do but it is uh, hopefully not something that stays with you forever 
Um, I'm not speaking from experience, so I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody that has had this or known somebody that's had this. Um, just going based off of what I read, but definitely seek um, um, help from a doctor if you start feeling any of those symptoms, especially after birth, because it could be postpartum depression. Now there's also the seasonal depression, sad. Um, that is usually happens around uh, winter time and it's just with the lack of light. Um, some people get the same symptoms as uh, depressive disorders um, based on just the seasons. And then when the summertime hits, springtime, fall and all that stuff, other than uh, winter time, uh, you get pulled out of it automatically. So you definitely want to get some help during you know, the season. It's almost like seasonal allergies, but it's way more severe um, because it's a depressive disorder. So if you know that you're going to probably get depressed during the season of uh, winter or anything, just any season really, um, know that uh, it's usually because there's uh, a light like vitamin D and, and they treat it with light uh, therapies and uh, you can take medications for it. You can go to therapy for it. Uh, so just know that it's out there. Don't don't suffer through every winter feeling like crap because winter is a great time of the year to do a lot of things. So don't don't suffer through it just because this is what you've been dealing with for the past 10 years. So the next one is obviously for women. Premenstrual dysphoric disorder, PMDD. So it's basically PMS, but way more severe. It is uh, the hormones are messing with your. Uh, with your, with your brain basically, just like a normal MDD or clinical depression, uh, right before uh, your, your period and during your period, and it's, it's, it's severe. It's, it's enough to be considered a disor uh, depressive disorder. Um, the normal meds, the normal everything uh, will help alleviate a lot of that. So definitely get that checked. If, if it's something that you think is probably PMS and it's like, this is what I've dealt with my whole life, and this is nothing, this is nothing, uh, get a third party, you know, somebody that's unbiased to, to give you this straight up, hey, this is not, this is not normal. This isn't normal PMS. You have like severe feelings of stress, like severe, like crazy. I mean, I don't want to use the word crazy. I'm sorry. Uh, but like super, super severe, high outputs of stress and anxiety, way big mood swings, and just con uh, consistent feeling of sad hopelessness and very self-critical. These are all things that um, are a part of that. So it's not normal to have that with PMS, uh, at least at not that severe level. Now the next one is an atypical depression. Now atypical means that you don't normally show the typical symptoms of depression. Um, you do experience some of the symptoms such as, you know, overeating, sleeping too much, extreme sensitivity to uh, criticism and, and all that stuff. But then when something good happens, um, you're lifted out of it. You're just completely lifted out of it. Um, but then you kind of go back into it, but then you're lifted out of it. Like I mentioned before that uh, with me anyways, I would always be in a low state, always be in a low state. And then when something good does happen, I would just feel like I'm in a normal state. Like I'm not happy, but it's like, all right, I'm, I guess this is like a normal baseline, even though there's something good that happened. Um, and then I'd go back to being low after that good thing stopped happening because I couldn't, I couldn't ha let myself be happy. Um, just what's going on in my head, like something just minor would happen negatively that would bring me back to low. So, uh, with atypical, you kind of, you get out of it. You absolutely get out of it, but then you go back to being a low, uh, when something happens, you know, you still have the fatigue and everything, but you're just not super depressed. Uh, you're not super sad. You just get the lethargy, the all that stuff. So I know this was a long video and I'm, and I'm hoping that I was able to give you guys some insight. I kind of rambled on a little bit, but this is also part of like a Moto Vlog Friday, uh, Men's Mental Health Friday, or Men's Health specifically Friday. Um, but if some of these symptoms do affect you and you are a woman, you know, this could be it, especially the premenstrual thing. I don't think any men are going to have that. Um, but if you notice this in a partner, you notice this in a loved one, you notice this in anybody, especially a coworker, if you notice that they're kind of just being like, you know, slow and, and, and just like tired all the time for, for a while, um, it could be, uh, you know, MDD or it could be the persistent depressive disorder. So these are all things that it's always good to look out for, especially men. Uh, we don't talk about it and I want us to be able to start talking about it more often. So. 
I don't know. I just I just wanted to bring that up to you guys. And if you like it, please click that subscribe button. Right next to it is the notification bell button. When you click that, you're notified every single time I post a video. I post a video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Fridays are what we're talking about today. Men's mental health and everything. And I just want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. And all those guys in the description. And all those guys up here. Thank you so much. I truly, truly appreciate it. Ah, oh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and go and find an energy drink because I am tired. I am tired. We're going to get through this together. I'll see you guys later.